In my last video, I went through my plan and design for my custom blog project. That blog has been launched and it's live at duanecreates.com. I can't say it's all ready yet because I launched like an MVP version of the blog. It's better to launch a project early to market and then get some user feedback rather than perfecting it and you're maybe not sure if that's what the user really wants. So thankfully I got some user feedback and I'll make sure to implement it in the future updates. Let me show you what I've done. So this is a quick scroll through the homepage. I based this off the design that I did in the previous video, but it's not 100% because I changed some ideas afterwards, but that's only small changes, I guess. This is the footer. So yeah, it's pretty close to the design. The menu is very similar to the design. I think it's pretty accurate. We have the main navigation here and then there's some tags on the left here. I removed the feature blog posts from the top above the fold section here because I don't think it's that important. I don't think that I have that much content so it doesn't really make sense to feature uh, content. I think it's okay to keep it simple like just showing thumbnails from the get-go. And these are the thumbnails for each post. Basically, if you hover over the thumbnail, you see a little effect there. I tried to make almost all the elements interactive in some way. For example, you have hover effects for the menu, the title here, the image, and the small uh, call to actions, same here. Even this will have some shadow. The hello will get the line removed when you hover. Uh, even the links here, they have some interaction. Basically, I try to do simple animations that I think are polishing in, in a way. I think these small little things that affect a lot. Don't overdo it with animations and uh, you'll be fine. Also, the footer is very similar to the design. The only exception being this newsletter part because I decided to use ConvertKit and embed their system otherwise i would have to create my own custom newsletter and i didn't see the point of that because convert kit seems to be pretty good even with the free plan so i just went with that for now in the future we'll see the read page is pretty simple as well i mean there's nothing special to it it's just an article so far I only have 3 articles, but that will surely increase by time. Regarding the interaction, I also have a small interaction in the images. And there's also this page where it's just the slash links page basically because of Instagram, because in Instagram you can only post one link. So I decided to make a slash links page where all my links go. There are some things which I need to fix. If I reduce the size here, uh, you can see that the website is responsive, however when it goes to this small scale, the footer here will start to get a little pressed, yeah. So I need to make them become a new line in the mobile version. The syntax highlighting of articles here should, should have some color of course, but in this case, for now, there's no colors. Now let's go through how I built this website. Since I like building things myself and I wanted a custom blog, and I don't like using WordPress, I decided to use Gritsum to generate a static website. Gritsum is a static site generator, so basically it's like a framework for Vue.js, but when you're going to build the website, it will generate a static page for each route dynamically, so it's pretty cool actually. I think Gritsum is perfect for a blog website because in this case there's no accounts and there's not that much dynamic data. I mean, the only change will be when I post or edit a new article. Uh, so when I do that, I just rebuild the website. So there's not that much of a process. Basically, it's mostly automated. If you have used Nux.js before, you might notice some similarities, although they are not the same exactly. Uh, Nux also does provide static site generation, but it's also capable of doing a universal app which means that the app will be server-side rendered on the first load and then a normal single page application after the first load. In this case, it's just a static site, so it's server-rendered always. Uh, however, it does kick in the view SPA after the first load as well. So the routing is still pretty fast when you switch from one page to another. 
However, Nuxt obviously has much more capabilities since it's a universal app and not just a static side generation. If we go through some directory here, we have the source where basically all the app lives, but then there's also some uh, configuration files. For example, here um, I'm setting stuff like the site name and how the title will be presented some uh, Favikin stuff and Google Analytics. That's a plugin which comes with Gridsum, so that's pretty easy to implement. Then I um, I set the source file system plugin. This is where Gridsum will get its data from. So with Gridsum, you can get data from multiple places and then they join to like one local database kind of, and then you use GraphQL to query that data. In this case, I decided to just use markdown files so each blog post is a markdown file and I set it up that I can post in this directory and uh, basically here every.md file will be picked as a type of post and the same for the links which I've mentioned before so each link has a markdown file and then there's the server here is just in this case I just used it to set up a few custom routes um, regarding the data, I can show you the data which are here. This is just a sample. So you have the part of the blog post, the title, the date, and a bunch of other data. And then you start writing the article here. And uh, the same goes for the links, but obviously that's a little different structure. And um, each element of a post will have a template. So this is a way how you can present every element of type post. And um, this is the GraphQL part where you can get the data that you need. And um, some dynamic page titles, basically nothing fancy. Um, in this case, I'm just using a component called read, which is the presentation of the article read page, which is this one. I still have some to do as you can see because this is like a it's like a MVP version of the website so yeah there's still some more work to be done the assets is where I place images and some styling the components is like any view application where you place a bunch of components the data we covered layouts is the the common parts of the website so in this case I only have a layout and each layout will have a menu a header and the footer and then the dynamic part of the route um, the pages which will generate a route automatically so as i said these there's not much really there's just the about and index page the links page and to browse the blog post and code notes and then the read page i added that with the config um, it's not complicated this app uh, main.js is where i set the favikin I imported the icons and also I set the store here. There's no complications with the store. I only have one property in the store, which just determines if there's the menu opened or not. I'm also including the convert kit here. So it's not a complicated structure. Um, and there's the tailwind, which is a normal tailwind config, totally normal. Um, with the grid sum, you can use a terminal here and you can type grid sum develop or npm run uh, develop. And this will generate a local environment of your grid sum application. And just like that, now we have a local host 8080 local website. And uh, this is the sample blog post. And that's it basically. It's not complicated. And to build the website, all you have to do is just say grid sum build or npm run build. And that will generate a folder for you with a bunch of static pages and you can just put that in your public folder of your hosting and your website will be working it will be uploaded i guess it will be published so that's it for the grid sum part if i had to build my blog again what would i do differently i think i would use nux.js instead of grid sum because i think it provides much more flexibility which would definitely be helpful if I plan to expand from a static website to a fully dynamic website. I would also probably join the code notes and the blog post together because I don't really see that it makes sense for many people when it's separate. 
because they don't really care they just want to read the content so why split them around what's the difference between a code note and a blog post I think that provides more complexity for the user. I would do a dark mode instead of a light mode first, so a dark mode designed by default, because I think that since this website is aimed at developers, and nowadays developers prefer dark mode, then it would have made sense to just do the dark mode first. In the future, I'm still going to do the, the both modes, you know, like you have that switch where you switch between light mode and dark mode. I guess it was a shortcoming from my end in the planning phase where I didn't really think about the user in that perspective about the light mode dark mode issue um, I guess I learned something and that's why I always say to keep on creating because you always learn something from every project so yeah I guess I learned something and actually I learned a lot not just something if I decide in the future that this blog will become something bigger I will surely rebuild it with Nox.js as it provides more flexibility but for now, I'm not going to perfect it. I'm not going to rebuild it just to say I have a perfect system. Because what good does it have to have a perfect system where nobody is using it anyways? So I prefer to focus on the content and get it more popular with people, get it higher ranked in the search engine. So provide more content, more value, more gold in that section, in that content section. And... Uh, in the future, maybe I will rebuild it, but for now, that's not the priority for sure. It would be kind of a waste of time, in my opinion. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure you do, because I will be keeping you updated about this project and all my other projects. I plan to start a project very soon. That's going to be interesting. You might even use it for yourself. So thanks for watching. Make sure you follow me on social media. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And see you around. Keep creating. Peace.